Oh, hi, I'm Chris License, and welcome back to another episode of Our License to Travel. Have you ever heard the old saying, it's the nature of the beast? Well, in our world, the beast is our home, and just by the fact that it can move means that things will wear out and some will break. This is a good day as any to start the rebuilding of life. The roads that lay open are many. When the old ones gone on the night. Knowing this and not wanting to get caught flat footed, you know, stranded, incapacitated, you group that together and it's basically unprepared. We like to arm ourselves with some knowledge to effect basic repairs, have the tools we need to facilitate those repairs, and because many of the parts we may need might be specific to our home, our RV, at least a few of the more common consumables might be. Parts we may need, we like to have them around just in case. Being prepared for the inevitable means that we can lower our stress a few notches and usually guarantee that we can get back on the road to our next destination, not feeling dependent on services which may or may not be available near our current location. And yes, I know that there are things you can't foresee and it would be impractical to have enough equipment and parts to completely rebuild your rig. And unless you're the US military, having an entire new spare rig just following you around on your travels is just way too impractical. So we compromise. Well, that may not be the best choice of words. What we really do is try to stay ahead of the curve. First and foremost is what a good mechanic would call preventive maintenance. Everything we deal with in this RV world has consumable things that are designed to wear out and need to be replaced at regular cycles or intervals. For example, tires. We know that in time, they will wear to a point that a replacement is needed. Some brands, for our safety, will just replace on a time schedule, mainly because of reliability issues. Road hazards and other factors play a big part in that issue of replacement as well. Most rigs come with a spare, and not just a tire, but a wheel and tire ready to go. Just remove the old and put on the new one, and you're back on the road except you may still need a few extra things, tools to remove the old and replace with the new. A jack large enough to lift that axle and the skills and strength to safely perform the task. If you have neither, then a very good and reliable roadside service plan may be an option, your only option, which means sticking to the more well-traveled roads. So either way, number one on our list of spare parts is a spare tire. And top on our list of preventive maintenance schedules is for, in our case, foreign made tires, nothing over three years old from date of manufacture on the rig, and that's spare included. There are some other things that come to mind that you should consider keeping on your rig or in your truck if you have a fifth wheel like us. For those just-in-case times that can help to keep you from getting stranded on the side of the road or just prevent you from having that great RVing experience, then with you might be able to quickly just repair and get back on the road again. Number two is another basic item we should all have on our RV, kind of like the spare, and it's fuses for your RV. There is your breaker panel, and those can usually be reset for the AC side. Rarely you may need to replace one, but fuses are consumable. Once they blow, then it needs to be replaced, and that's because a lot of things inside our RV is dependent on our 12-volt power. Now, you still need to track down and fix the problem, but once you have, replacing the fuse gets you back on the road. You may be stuck if you don't keep extra fuses handy. There have been multiple times where we have had to replace a fuse, from lighting to an issue with a fridge fan in the back of the unit, where we had to replace a defective fan and put a new fuse in to get it up and running again. 
So having these fuses on hand can give you the opportunity to get those things like the fridge to work again so you can roll on. We'll leave a few links below in the comments for things we regularly carry. And no, we're not sponsored. We'd also love for you to leave a comment below of items that you would not RV without as far as spare parts. Kind of along these lines that you keep on hand because if it were to fail, you wouldn't want to be left stranded. Okay, our next things are those that will help keep you from being stranded along the side of the road. We'll be looking at things like suspension components, leaf springs, bearings, shackles, and bolts. Because we have a fifth wheel, these are the components that we've had personal experience with having failures as well, and from others telling us about their mishaps. If the suspension gets damaged, like a broken spring, a bolt fell out, shackle broke, you might be pretty much dead in the water till you can get some kind of a fix. On the other hand, things like a plumbing leak or your water heater going kaput, you can pretty much get it to somewhere to have it fixed or to a park where you can work on it. We don't carry these things all the time, but there will be a kit we will carry on the RV when we get our chance to head to Alaska. Who knows, you may want to carry these items all the time because they might be hard to source wherever you're at. Let's take a quick look at this kit. There's the leaf spring, and finding the perfect size and length might be tough to do. You got to deal with load rating, number of leaves, the length, we keep one set of shackles, the wet bolts, and bushings. We don't expect them to break, but we have heard of bolts uh, somehow just falling out. Next is the bearings. Not every bearing is going to be the same for each RV, and that's a good reason to carry extra bearings for yours. They come in pairs and races and seals as well. Now, the next may not necessarily leave you stranded, but may be difficult to find, and if you need to do a quick repair before inclement weather, it's great to have these on hand. First is a couple of tubes of self-leveling sealant. Once opened, even with the end covered, the shelf life is only about a couple of weeks. We also keep some Eternabond tape and always have a small jug of alcohol to be able to prep the surface we're going to seal with either the sealant or the tape. Great to have if you have a snag to the roof from a branch or whatever. There are also some assorted other items we keep on hand as well, like plumbing parts. Most every RV uses PEX tubing and connections. Backflow preventers, we try to get the ones that are out of brass, the ones supplied with your Water heater are plastic and often fail within a year. We've had a couple of plumbing leaks that we've fixed in our rig and because we had the tools and the parts on hand, we could fix them within uh, minutes and not skip a beat. We've got the crimping tool, extra clamps, silicone cone washers, pieces of PEX in red and blue, as well as assorted fittings. They're really small and light and can be a game changer when you have a leak. You can also keep a few shark bite connections that will get you by in a pinch, then change it out later. It might be just enough to save the day till you can get it fixed, uh, the ones that are generally like a cap off end. We do keep a small container full of electrical items like splices, butt connectors, wire nuts, crimps, heat shrink, and a meter, etc. So basically a small container of electrical and another of plumbing. We'll have links below in the description so you can create a little kit for your RV. This way you have equipment which is specific for your rig. We know of some folks who have gone as far as to keep an extra Schwintech motor on hand for their slides as a just in case, but to be fair they have had quite a bit of trouble with their slides. Having some of this stuff on hand could save you the agony of waiting for months while you wait for one part to show up so you can effect repairs. Then just get her done and use your RV again. Let's get her done. You would at least have the parts even if you needed someone to help you. We are really interested in what items you guys might have for that just-in-case scenario. So don't forget to leave your list in the comments below. 
We hope this list helps you come up with your own idea of putting together your list of spare parts for your rig and helps you to have a better RVing experience. So if you like this video, give us a like, thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about RVing, then punch that subscribe button. And if we don't see you out on the road, maybe we'll see you in the next video. So please, travel safe.